Hello peoples, welcome to Pretty Not Perfect Crafts. I'm Claire. I hope you enjoy what I make today. When you're using resin, always wear gloves, a respirator and have plenty of ventilation. So today I have got loads and loads of oyster shells that I've collected from the beach. And they're all different sizes, but I'm going through all of them looking for ones that are quite deep. Anything that's flat is not going to work here. I'm trying to make a um, little beach scenes inside each shell, so they need to be deep enough that the resin doesn't come running out the sides. So I made some of these last year. I only had about six or so oysters then. And I made some, I put them on my stall and they sold out so quickly that I thought for this year, when my stall reopens in March, I will be adding some more. So I literally have tons and tons of these at the moment here that I'm gonna be trying to fill today, as many as I can get done. Right, so here I have my J Diction one to one resin. I've mixed up 250 ml, but I'm just pouring a little bit in this extra cup that I have poured loads of sand in. Now I want the sand to be completely soaked through. I don't want any dry sand at the bottom, which is very good at blocking the liquid from getting to the bottom, so it needs a good stir. And then all I'm gonna do is just spoon out bits and bits into each of the oysters. Now it needs to be a nice little layer on the bottom so it looks like the seabed. So I'm just going to do that for each one. So I actually ended up running out of sand, so I couldn't fill up all the oysters I've actually got. So I'm just going to decorate all the ones I did manage to get some sand in. And I'm starting off with these little tiny white gravel pebbles that I actually had for my garden. Just putting a couple in each one, just kind of dropping them. There's no particular placement. I want it to kind of look as natural as possible. And you can see that they so slowly sink into the sand there. And now I have my teeny tiny shells that I'm going to be dropping in as well. Again, just a couple in each one. Now I'm using my little sort of artificial grass things. I think it's designed um, for like uh, the miniatures uh, making. And it looks a bit like sort of grass, but it's got little red dots in it as well. So I'm just adding some in here, just random places around the rocks as if it's like sort of a um, mossy uh, sea plant growing over the, uh, on the sand and up the rocks there.
So this first layer I'm going to leave to set up so it's nice and firm before I then add these little fishies. These are really tiny goldfish nail art stickers. And what I want to do is just again add a couple in random places on each of the shells so just to give them some nice sort of pond sea life decoration there. Now the thing is they're really hard to get off their backing. They're so tiny um, and it's quite they try to fold round against your finger. They're quite a fiddly thing to use. I haven't actually ever tried to apply them to nails, but I could only imagine that you could do it when your nails were completely cured or you'd have nail varnish everywhere. off to the side there is the cat figurine statue I've used in other videos that I got recently. Um, I just had some leftover resin from when I made up the sand layer and I poured it in there just to use it up. Right and when all the fish are stuck on I'm going to put a tiny bit of the uh, mica powder. This is iridescent blue so it should give it this tiny blue sheen in the light I've got my J-Diction resin mixed up. I'm just mixing the blue into this tiny little amount of resin first of all. It always gives a much better mix so you don't tend to get any little mica powder lumps. And then I'm going to pour this into the rest of the resin to then give it a good mix so it will all have this lovely little shimmer in the light. There we go. I'm just trying to pour it in here in the first couple of shells I poured and then I looked and thought no that it's too clear still so I put a couple of drops of blue alcohol ink in just to give it that slight blue tint so it looks a lot darker obviously when you've got a lot of it in your cup but actually as you obviously fill the shells up you can see it's a lot paler in the shells and I'm having a little bit of an issue with some of them um, trying to over pour as I've sort of now filling them up a bit more. I've got my little red triangle silicon matte pieces there and what I have to try and do is kind of balance them around the edges of the shells to get the shell to stay upright and the resin to stop leaking out. This is kind of like a little fun puzzle game trying to find which way around the shell needs to lean to stop it leaking out from any side and then can I fit another shell on this red bit and or do I need more red bits? It was quite an interesting time trying to get them all filled up without losing all their resin before they're cured. Some of the problem is they look like they're going to be fine and then you'll suddenly notice they're over spilling on one side which is quite annoying you suddenly have to go and rotate them and add a bit more resin back into them but i do get there eventually
Now the problem with the ones that are leaking down before I notice them obviously is that like this they're getting all over the bottom of the shells and there were a few at the end that have made themselves a little resin flat base so they will always balance in the way they are stacked against these little red things. Um, I just smoothed the base out with some sandpaper because it had little sharp edges on it but other than that it means they now balance perfectly. So now they're all here sitting and waiting to cure it up and let's see what they look like in 24 hours time. So here they all are, you can see the ones where the light is hitting them have a much more blue sheen to them than the ones where it's not. So although they're all the same resin, they look slightly different in different lights. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that one and I'll see you again soon.